for years, we've always seen if you if you were to say, let's look at a bracket and let's figure out where our Cinderellas are going to come from. Uh, safe bet, safe like uh, uh, prop bet, if you will. Almost always, you can look at that number twelve seat to be that Cinderella that emerges and really does well in the tournament. Liberty is that team, uh, and I think you know. Again, because I'm superior in knowledge, I picked them uh, to beat Mississippi State in my bracket that is dominating, the one of the two. Uh, but of course, uh, they, they, <laughs> they match up against <laughs> they match up against Virginia Tech, and I've got Duke and Virginia Tech, and but I, I got Virginia Tech beating beating out Duke, and so we'll see what happens there. But Liberty has that potential in that number 12 spot, even though I wasn't strong enough, uh, didn't have enough strong enough intestinal fortitude to get them past this round. But history tells us I could very well be wrong. Yeah, you know, I mean, Liberty is a team that can shoot, uh, obviously, and they can shoot well. And when you get a, a team like that that gets hot, when it's a one-game scenario like this, that's where it becomes dangerous for any of those, you know, top seeds because a, a team that's shooting the daylights out of the basketball and gets hot, that's, uh, that's detrimental. You know, let's be honest, you know, probably 7 out of 10, Mississippi State takes that basketball game. But, uh, you know, Liberty is dangerous, especially from three-point range. So that will be interesting to see them uh, against Virginia Tech. I mean, uh, to me, I mean, obviously the team can be upset, like I said, in this one-game scenario. But Duke just looks too good in this bracket. Uh, you know, uh, Duke-Michigan State, uh, you know, Elite Eight won't be terrible for us to have, you know, be subject to. Uh, so I like uh, I like Liberty and the, the the underdogs are fun, uh, you know. But you know another underdog that uh, that we haven't talked about is is Ohio State surprisingly exactly. because mm-hmm. nobody was as shocked as nobody was as shocked as I was last night they won that basketball game because you know I have to cover them uh, where I work now in Ohio and let's be honest this team has no real signature wins this year other than against Indiana uh, they they are a team where their top player Caleb Wesson was suspended at the end of the year for weed even though they don't want to say that's what it was for uh, and he's a guy who can't stay in the game a lot of times because he fouls out early because he's an emotional player so uh, nobody was more shocked last night with the number 11 seed Ohio State beating Iowa State than I was I, I, I work and cover them and I didn't pick them to win this first game because they have not put together a real complete game all year long and, and them picking that up that win last night is great for the Big Ten but it shocked the hell out of me. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm no big fan of Ohio State anyway, but it's it's no worse. When they they beat us in the tournament, and I'd say us, I mean IU, uh, and I really firmly believe, and that's just my prejudiced uh, uh, mind thinking, that had we beat Ohio State, we would have been there and not them. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, they still got the number one seed in the NIT, so what 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 more can you ask for, uh, right? Uh, so let's. <laughs> but you're right, that was a big win against uh, against well, I, I, Iowa State. That's for sure. Well, let's talk a little bit about the games going on today, sir. Uh, first of all, any any uh, any final things about the games that we haven't talked about that happened on Thursday and Friday and we'll get ready for today's games? It scares me a little bit uh, how close Colgate played Tennessee. I, I you know, I, I have Tennessee going to the Final Four just because I didn't want to pick a bracket where it's all number one seeds going uh, to the Final Four. So, I you know, I like what I saw of Tennessee this year. I like a lot of uh, – of, uh, you know, what they did on the basketball floor. They took a couple of bad losses, but, you know, pretty much dominated, uh, came out of nowhere and dominated the uh, SEC. So Tennessee playing Colgate to only seven-point win the other day uh, scared the hell out of me. First game on tap is Maryland and LSU. Let's look at those two, how they got there. Uh, Maryland, barely Belmont. I had Belmont in a couple of my brackets uh, to to do well. Uh Belmont has a, a player from here in Indianapolis from Perry Meridian. Uh, so I really thought Belmont could do better than they did. But nonetheless, Maryland just barely escaped. LSU barely escaped. Yale Yale would have been a great upset there. So we have two teams that barely escaped uh, to start off today's game. Yeah, and it's great because in my bracket, if you look at my bracket, I had Yale playing Belmont. I think what hurt Belmont uh, was the fact that they had to play that play-in game I think had they not played that game, I think they beat Maryland. And obviously I had picked Yale to beat LSU, which it's hard to watch when you pick upsets and see them that close and not come through. But here's what I like about Maryland. You know, we saw it earlier in the year when Maryland played Indiana. Indiana had a huge lead on Maryland. And Maryland can pour in a lot of points, and they can pour them in real quick. Uh, and uh, and that's what uh, this Maryland team did. And, you know, and they're tough on the inside. You know, I, I like Maryland's inside game a lot. Uh, LSU, you know, they're going through the issues where their coach is suspended. 
uh, probably going to be fired because of the wiretaps that came out. So I think, uh, you know, I don't put, I don't put a loss on these kids at this point because when you're a team like that and you go into the tournament, now you're not playing for your head coach. I, I think that, uh, you know, emotionally, I don't know that, that they're able to use this to, to get a win. I think things are kind of in chaos when it just happened, to, you know, a week and a half ago. I think Maryland wins this game, but again, no fault to, uh, to LSU just because I think that it's unfair to these kids, uh, you know, what, what their coach either did or didn't do, but him being suspended right before the tournament, I think that sucks for them. If John Calipari and the UK Wildcats did not watch a lot of tape on Wolf, uh, Wolf, or however, however you say that, and especially with that win over Seton Hall, well, they better be put on notice that they can get beat. And if they get beat today by Wolf, uh, that's huge. That's mammoth. Now, do I expect it to happen? No. But I certainly guarantee you one thing. They've prepared well for UK, maybe more than UK has prepared for them. And maybe for over the last 24 hours, they did nothing but eat, live, and sleep tape of Wolf. Yeah, I mean, when you look at Wofford, you look at a team that can super Wofford, well okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. So if, 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 if uh, you know, they can keep it close in the second half, uh, you know, there's a good chance they could knock Kentucky off just because, you know, and they've got one player who set the uh, the the uh, NCAA record for three point shots, uh, you know, during that game. So it, it's definitely a team that could be Kentucky as long as they can keep it close. Uh, Kentucky obviously can out physical Wofford, and they can out physical most teams uh, in college basketball. But uh, they've obviously got you know theoretically more five star talent than Wofford. I don't know if Wofford's ever seen a five star player, but. Man, oh, man, can they shoot the basketball, and, and they can shoot it well. So if they keep it close, Tom, make sure that you tune in for the end of that game because it could be real fun. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, coming up also today, uh, this, this evening, is Florida against Michigan. I got my, at my bracket at the office um, where they're going to give away $100 if you win. I got Michigan winning it all. Nice. Yeah, 175 and 50. So if you're in the first three, you're going to get a little coinage. Uh, I got Michigan, and you were only allowed to do one bracket, by the way. <laughs> I got <laughs> I got Michigan going all the way uh, to the championship in that particular bracket. So I got to root for them against the Gators. But I tell you what, I saw like I, like we talked about earlier, we saw uh, Florida create an upset. I don't think they got enough to do it for Michigan, uh, but uh, Florida and Michigan today. Well, here's what concerns me about Michigan. You know, they dominated the Big Ten through for you know three fourths of the, of the season, but man, they really took their foot off the gas at the end of the year. You know, took, taking a couple of bad losses, including to uh, to Rutgers. Uh, you know, losing the Big Ten tournament to Michigan State. But uh, you know, I just it, it concerned me how much they took their foot off the gas at the end of the year. But there's one thing that John Beeline knows, Tom, and and I and I think the same reason that I put them in uh, in the Final Four is that. He knows how to get to the Final Four into the championship game. That's one thing he does. And there's very rarely a better coach on the basketball floor than John Beeline. Uh, now, if he could figure out how to recruit better, you know, if he could recruit how Coach K and, and how John Collar Perry does, Michigan could be a force for years because this guy can coach. Um, I think Michigan wins this basketball game. But, again, it, it concerns me uh, about how bad they played towards the end of the year. But uh, hopefully they pull it together today and, and they knock off number 10 Florida. Two teams that are firing on all cylinders uh, meet up the, this evening. And, of course, we talk, we've talked about both of them today, and that's Murray State and Florida State. This could be a, a Cinderella, beginning of a Cinderella on the run. Uh, I don't know at what point do you call them a Cinderella, if they get to the Elite Eight or if they get to the Final Four. Uh, but uh, certainly if they beat Florida State, we're going to start having the conversation about Murray uh, being a Cinderella. We are, but, you know, I gained a lot of respect watching Florida State against Duke uh, in the ACC championship game. They, uh, they are a tough team, man, and, and they can do it all. They can, they can do it inside, outside. They play good defense. Uh, you know, they've got a couple of kids uh, that play on the front line that are just, you know, fantastic basketball players, tough, strong. And I think that that could be the advantage uh, against Murray State today. Uh, granted, you know, They've got a lottery pick at Murray State uh, who can do it all, as we saw with a triple-double the other day. But I, I think the inside I think the inside game of Florida State uh, could dominate it. You know, a lot of times we look at offensive rebounds for a team who wins a basketball game, and very rarely does a team who doesn't dominate the offensive board win a basketball game. So I do like the physical presence of Florida State on the inside. But to me, this game uh, is a toss-up at this point. Well, we keep playing basketball all day long. I tell you again, again uh, 
you just get, get get up early and go to bed late on Thursdays and Friday in March Madness in uh, in rounds one and two. Uh, Baylor beat a very good uh, Syracuse uh, and uh, Jim Boheim's team, and uh, uh, certainly uh, I, I I don't know how much that that accident actually affected his play, uh, coaching, and mental status, but I would say not much at all. But at the same time, uh, Baylor was able to find a way to beat Syracuse. Now. They're, they're playing Gonzaga, and, and I've got Gonzaga going to the Final Four, and I know a lot of people do. I know a lot of people even have them in the championship game. The Bulldogs are, are, are the real deal, and we know uh, these the Gonzaga, very, we're very familiar with them in, in the month of March. But you got to give credit for the Baylor Bears playing a, very, uh, playing a pretty good Syracuse Orange uh, to, to get in a spot to play Gonzaga. If they knock Gonzaga off, that's a bracket buster. In, in 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 biblical proportions, but Baylor Bears are a good team. Yeah, they are a good team. But it, you know, just like with John Beeline in Michigan, there's very few times that Mark Few, the coach of Gonzaga, steps on the floor and the coach on the other side is a better coach than him. You know, he's one of those guys that you know. Look at uh, he, he's like a, a Brad Stevens at Beller. He brought this team into prominence. Uh, you know, how many years ago, you know, 12 years ago, we, I think everybody was like, well, where's, where the hell is Gonzaga from? But, you know, now we know that school each and every year, and they're, they're a perennial powerhouse when it comes to tournament time. Uh, he's another guy who, imagine if he if he, if he recruited five-star athletes like some of the big schools mm-hmm. are able to, uh, you know, Gonzaga would be, you know, damn near unstoppable. Uh, but I, I love Mark Few, the head coach of Gonzaga. I love the way this, this team plays. We saw them come out and do what you're supposed to do when you're a one seed. You dominated the 16. Uh, 87-49 in that first game. I, 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 as good as Baylor has played, I think Gonzaga is just going to be too much for him today. So we've got a Big Ten matchup in the tournament. It doesn't get any better than that, especially being a huge Big Ten guy that I am. you got two great coaches, uh, Patino Jr., if you will, and Tom Izzo, who's been there, done that before. Uh, but at the same time, I, I, I guess I have to admit, I, I enjoyed Tom Izzo pulling a Bobby Knight on the sidelines against the freshman. I believe it was a traveling call, and his name escapes me. But he caught a lot of grief because we're in this, this world where, where we got to we got to shield our millennial players. We got to, we've just got to, they're all snowflakes. I mean, I love seeing an old school coach coach old school ways. And as Matthew talked a little bit earlier, he didn't actually get physical with him as Bobby Knight may have, but at the same time, it was good to see a coach get in the face of a player and say, Hey, you just jacked up and you almost cost us a spot in the tournament. And that's something you're going to have to live with the rest of your life. Pay attention, get your head out of your ass, and let's play some basketball. That's really what Tom Izzo said to sum it up, because uh, I can lip read. But <laughs> any which way, what are your thoughts? Minnesota uh, against Michigan State, Tom Izzo, Patino. And, and again, what are your thoughts about uh, Tom Izzo just getting in the face? I, well, like you, I liked it. You know what I mean? I think there's a point to where you stop, but you know, sometimes you just got to freak out on somebody and, and show them how upset you are when. You know, when kids are used to being coddled so long, uh, you're right. I think it's made everybody snowflakes nowadays. I enjoyed seeing Tom Izzo get fired up the other day. And Tom Izzo is another curious one. As big and as long uh, and as good as this Michigan State program has been, you know, very rarely does Tom Izzo get a bunch of five-star recruits. But he continues to be uh, solid every single year. You know, I mean, it, when you look at those, those five-star recruits every year, very few of them pick Michigan State. You know, we saw Caleb Swanigan a couple of years ago flip the Michigan State to Purdue. Uh, I mean, there was some behind-the-scenes stuff, obviously, when I went that. But, you know, it, it, it's funny how Tom Izzo stays so consistent every single year uh, when he's not getting the big-name players. And it, it makes you begin to wonder, you know, he's got that Nick Saban type of uh, situation where he's the king uh, of that part of Central Michigan and he can be that forever if he wants to be. But is there a point where he just gets tired and goes, you know, I, I need to do something different and maybe uh, take an NBA job? But uh, I, I like Richard Pitino, like I said earlier, a uh, young upstart team. It, it only takes one game, one bad game by Michigan State for Minnesota to move on. But I just think the experience of Tom is, though, he's done it so long and so long at this high level and so long in, in the big, in the uh, in the big dance that I, I see it being a hard time for Minnesota to pick up the victory today. We got a, a really good matchup if you want to stay up tonight, and that's uh, Villanova against Purdue. 
Two strong teams. Purdue has obviously proved himself. Matt Painter, uh, Big Ten Coach of the Year, certainly earned that right. I'm not a Purdue fan, obviously, by association. But, hey, they're in the tournament. They're, they're from Indiana. They're the only school from Indiana in the tournament that's alive, uh, that is still playing or 